my friends and welcome back to my channel, Minimum Player Count. I am Stephanie and today we're taking a look at Quest and Cannons. This is by Short Hop Games. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So depending on the amount of players you have and the type of mode that you're playing in is going to decide on the type of map that you're going to create. Now this has a variable player map and this is more of a pick up and deliver type of game. Now you can go anywhere from 1v1 to 2v2 to 3v3 or you could do a free for all or you know just kind of decide on what your group feels. Now what you're gonna be doing is everyone's gonna get their own shipboard and this is a prototype, so be aware that some of these components are subject to change. Now, what you are getting is you're gonna be placing any ship upgrades and these sl ship slots. If you get coins, they're gonna be placed here. This is where you're actually gonna be putting your player tile in there, and that's gonna depend on the one that you place. So what happens is you just slide it right in there, and this is gonna tell you how you start your game. It's also gonna give you how much life you have as that player. You get three actions points per turn, and this is where you're gonna be placing your ship sails, and you're gonna be using them to do extra movement. This down here is where you're gonna be placing your cannons, this is gonna be where your dice go, and this is gonna be where you store your goods that you have picked up. So if you're doing a group type of game, what you're gonna be doing is you're actually gonna be picking a faction, and then you're gonna pick off of that faction what players you're gonna be playing. So some of these have pictures and some of them don't because those are, again, prototypes still be, to be determined. But what you're gonna be doing again is when you move, you have to use an action. Now, if you wanna move more than one space, you can either use another action or if you have sails that have been unspent, you can spend those sails to move further. Now, as you're moving and you discover new islands, what you'll be doing is as soon as you discover or land on a new island, you're gonna be flipping over a token that is on that specific island. You're gonna look at the goods that are on that island. You can then collect or gather those goods and place them in your ship, especially if you have enough space. You're gonna gain a coin and you're gonna gain a quest. Now quests are important because in this game, you have to complete quests so that you can gain prosperity so that you can win. Now winning conditions for this game can depend on the amount of players you have and the amount of prosperity that you need to win. So when you do complete a quest, you do have to read specifically what the quest says, and then you're able to gain prosperity or loot in that case for actually gaining that quest. There are also things called map clues, and the map clue is you actually have to spend an action point to complete these map clues. Map clues are you go to a specific location, you spend an action point, and then you can gain a prosperity or a loot. Now, once you complete a map, Quest, you're actually gonna be placing that face up in front of you. The only way to actually cash in those map quests is by returning to your starting space. When you return to your starting space, you gain prosperity on the amount of map clues that you have. So you're gaining kind of double prosperity if you're able to make it all the way back to your starting space. So again, mainly a pick up and deliver game, but there are some treacherous or hard to navigate through locations that I'm going to explain to you now and what different locations mean in this game. So there are things called calm seas or trading posts. Calm seas and trading posts are just one actual space. They don't actually require any extra movement and you can move to those normally. There are stormy sea spaces, which actually require two spaces or two actions to move through, two move actions to move through and to move out of. There are things called treacherous sea tiles that you have to roll a die and depending on the number that you get on that die roll is going to determine what kind of damage or if you're able to navigate freely through that space. Anytime you fail a treacherous sea roll, you're actually going to be gaining a plus one on your first fail and a plus two. This actually adds numbers to your next rolls if you do go through treacherous sea again. Some actual quests will say that you have to make it through safely through a, a treacherous sea. So it's important for you to still try to gain those kinds of actions depending on the kind of quest that you have. Now quests and map quests, you can only have three of each. So as soon as you gain another one, you actually have to discard it and go back down to three. If you are in teams though, another option is you can actually land on the same space as your teammate and you're able to trade more goods that way so that you can complete more quests and actually have that team environment. 
Now, there are also things that you actually have to do, which I'm not a big fan of, is actually fighting. So you actually have to gain cannons and also different types of ammo so that you can fire your cannons. So when you're firing your cannons against a person, you're actually gonna be rolling die and four successful die or four pips on your die is an actual whole damage to your opponent. So you're actually gonna be fighting each other in this so that you can actually destroy one person. And if you do actually end up sinking someone's ship, you're able to gain some goods from them while they do take that damage and they have to reset. So it's not that much of a competitive nature when you're actually talking about combat in that type of way. So though this game has combat, it's not required for you to actually have combat in this, but it does actually give you more prosperity if you're able to sink an opponent's ship. It gives you three prosperity and it hurts the other players. So that's actually a good thing for this case. So again, you're mainly gonna be trying to navigate through these treacherous seas, trying to maybe avoid or catch other players so that you can fight against them, and also be trying to sell goods at different locations so that you can gain more money. Money, I feel like, is scarce in this game, especially if you're playing, um, you know, not in a group environment where you're trying to just gain as much coins as possible so that you can upgrade your ship because upgrades are very important. You need to have a certain amount of cannons or ammo so that you can actually protect yourself. Some player skills allow you to have extra space for carrying goods, which is great to gain more money. Some of them are more combative where they'll actually allow you to have more cannons, which is great again just for combat. And some of them are more agile in the terms of they're able to move more freely throughout the map by using specific things. Now loot cards are cards that you can be gained through quests or that you can actually buy at the trading post. So loot cards will actually have some options of being able to get ship upgrades, which are extremely valuable, as long as you know it's not like a one-time thing and that you're able to use it continuously. Sometimes there are things that you can get from loot cards that are just one-time, which are still helpful, but the real big winners on that are gonna be those ship upgrades that really help you in throughout the game, which can only be received through getting those loot cards, which are pretty hard to get. If you're trying to complete quests to gain that prosperity, you have to decide if you're really trying to gain more of that coin prosperity or if you're trying to gain more ship upgrades by playing, I guess, kind of gambling on if you're gonna be able to get a good loot card. So other places on the map are trading posts. Trading posts are where you're gonna be able to trade goods out to either gain money or just to trade for other goods. There are outpost sections where you're able to actually upgrade your ship. This is very important again because upgrading your ship is essential. And there's your starting spaces. Starting spaces are gonna be where you're able to kick those map clues back to so that you're able to gain more prosperity and hopefully win the game. Now, that was a lot of information and I hope that you were able to kind of catch up to what I was saying here. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. Uh, if you want to know my thoughts on quests and cannons, please make sure to stick around to see the next video. I will link that up here. I will also uh, be tagging that down below for you. So if you do want to know my thoughts on quests and cannons, check it out. And again, I do want to thank you all so much for watching. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters and uh, everyone for watching my channel. So thank you so much. See you next time.